Kit Fox is kind of a split off from Avid. Prop. Taking the Prius off road. That's the airstrip right in front of us, I think. Oh, there he is. Howdy. I made it. Oh, dusty. This is a cool spot. Yeah. A little too bright. Welcome, guys, to another vlog. I'm here at Tony's private airstrip, and he's going to show us his avid airplane and talk about it and uh i think we're gonna go up in it he, he said he's gonna take me flying he's always wanted to and uh it's been a bit so i'm excited that we get to actually been to the altitude about 6300 this little <laughs> how long is your airstrip 1500 1500 so yeah it's it's on the short side <laughs> with two people that's what i was thinking i don't mind flying it but and a two-stroke well maybe i'll just film you or you could fly it, or know. really sorry it's me Okay. There's a lot more experienced pilot than I am. Well, I don't... Maybe a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so here we go. We're going to get right into it. All right, introduce yourself. I'm Tony. I live in Idaho. We have a farm. Uh, I don't farm anymore. I rented it out to somebody else. So tell us about how you got the Avid. Maybe a little history on the Avid and Kit Fox. Six years ago, I, uh, I kind of retired. I decided to go back to school and uh, take the aircraft mechanics course. Uh, so I did. I graduated. I got my mechanics uh, A&P certificate. And while I was in school, I bought this kit. I bought it from a person in uh, North Carolina. It was a partially finished kit and it had several owners and uh, we shipped it home and I started working on it while I was still in school. Finished it up about three years later. It took another year, nearly a year, to get it licensed, uh, registered with the FAA. My brother did the first test flight, so we did that in October of 2021. I started flying it a couple of months later. Uh, got about 120 hours on it now. Mostly fly and land and take off here on my own place, but, but it, the Avid folds up like a Kit Fox, and so in the wintertime, uh, I take it to one of the airports and fly there. Avid is a kit, is a, the Avid company doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, they started up, they were built in Idaho, in uh, Caldwell, I think, back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, kit Fox is kind of a split off from Avid. So Avid was first. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, uh, you know, people argue about it all the time. Okay. <laughs> but that's I, the way I understand it. Avid was first, but, you know, Avid went out of business uh, somewhere around 2000, okay. I believe. Okay. And Kit Fox goes on. Yeah. And they have bigger, newer, better models. Yeah. But this all froze in time. About This is one of the last ones made. How much did uh, you get the kit for? Back dollars? Then? Yeah. About 8000 Oh, okay. Um but it was pretty complete. I got the engine, which was an unused, unrun engine, propeller, uh, instruments, uh, fabric. You know, I, I didn't have to, you know. The whole shebang. Yeah, I mean, I, when, you, when you cover an airplane, you gotta buy all that other stuff, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the, the dopes and the tapes and all that, but. It, but it came with yeah. most. Uh, and then what engine? It's 582 uh, Rotax, that's uh, two cycle liquid cooled mentioned it took forever to get it licensed. The problem was the original owner of the kit had applied for an N number in like 92. Yeah. And uh, so that once they create a file, it's permanent. They have it forever. And so when I applied for an N number, they say, well, now we have two files on the same airplane. Oh. <laughs> and that that cooks you know that just kicks everything into absolute slow motion it just so how long did it take it was initial? nearly a year and with hundreds of phone calls and <laughs> <Oof. laughs> i i have heard horror stories about registering airplanes and dealing with the faa okay to, to, 
to help anybody who might yeah. want to know, yeah. uh, you, if you're building a kit, you are the builder. Avid is not the builder of this airplane, I am. Yep. And I can pick the serial number. It can be number one, it can be number two billion. Yeah. I can choose it. But not knowing that, I just wrote down the serial number that, that is on there. There is none on the on the oh. plane, but it was it was in the guy's paperwork. Ah. If I had just picked any other number, yeah, none of that would have happened. So, uh, just you know, you learn as you go here. But if yeah. I can help anybody at all, nice little tip. <laughs> Your standard concern is to be the builder. You got to build, uh, you know, fifty one percent. That's right. You got to somehow yeah. document that to yep. the FAA. For I thought sure. that would be my big worry because it was yep. partly built when I got it, but it wasn't. Gotcha. That wasn't the problem. It was just that serial number situation. I like your strobes. That's pretty good. They've been on there for a while then. Oh, they work fine. And they are visible for about three miles. Oh, that's good. I, I lit it up and drove off three yeah. miles and looked <laughs> at them. So, <laughs> so you don't have to buy the high expensive strobes and lights. You can really get away with the more budget-friendly um, options. Well, and these. experimentals, you don't even have to have lighting. Yeah, exactly. That's um, true. You know, you can't fly after dark if you don't. Yep. So it's got the same gear as kind of the Kit Fox had. With well, the, the, probably, this, the, probably the earlier ones. The bungee in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. I've had real good re uh, luck with the two-stroke, but uh, everybody's afraid of them. You yeah. Know, like reliability and all. Yeah. And so... I know I don't ever go anywhere, you know, where uh, I wouldn't have a safe place to land. Two strokes are known for just quitting. <laughs> they have higher failure rates than other engines, but other engines quit too. That's true. And uh, and the 582 is one of the best yeah. for reliability numbers. Yeah. I like you got the fairings on here. What are the, What's that out of, wood? It's wood. Oh, nice. I made them. When I said I got a complete kit, I didn't get those. You didn't get those. <laughs> <laughs> and so I carved them. <laughs> the baffles me with the under camber wing, but it flies good. Birds have under camber wings. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't see that many airplanes. Yeah. But that's a very, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, what's the magic number? The weight. Weighed out about 505 when I first built it. But, okay. You know, you add things. Yeah. Gross weight's uh, 1150, which is, you know, I don't know how you'd ever get that much in it, because <laughs> that's a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Little boots and whatnot. Yeah. Wheel chocks, tie downs. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Model 4s have a door that goes on the side. I didn't like the looks of it, so I just uh, covered it up with fabric and oh, made, okay. made the access on top. Oh, nice. You think of anything else? You'd like to say about the Avid? You know, I really like it. I'm glad I got it. You know, it's not like I don't spend all my time wishing I got some other airplane. You yeah, know? you like it. I that. wish it had a little more headroom, but I think I'm going to redesign the seat and improve that. It jumps right off the ground. Uh, it cruises about 85 miles an hour and uh, climbs on a cool morning. It'll climb 900 or 1,000 feet a minute. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, not bad at all. It'll land in about, well, with a better pilot than me, it'd probably land in 300 feet or less. Take off in about 450 most time. Your flaps, now the flap rounds like a Kit Fox. Yep. But there's no notches, it's just a friction thing. Okay. Uh, I've been using about one third flaps for takeoff on the rough ground. Okay. And uh, full flaps on landing, uh, but I don't usually pull them on until I'm on final. Okay. Because my only complaint with this whole flapper on mechanism yeah. is when you start pulling your flaps back, you'll feel it in in roll. You'll, you know, it'll affect. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you hand on the stick, hand on the flaps, and just work it back. And okay. Also, you'll feel quite a bit of nose down pitch. Gotcha. Yeah. When you pull the flaps on. For sure. Uh, uh, I, I did training in a Kit Fox. I don't remember it having quite so much as this. Flaps in under 60 or 65. Okay. The runway is lower than the canal bank. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You feel like you're going down into a hole. Okay, that's cool. And on takeoff, you got all these trees down on this end. Yeah. See, landing over here is in the hayfield. Okay, okay. Any issues, yep. 
you know, just, on takeoff. Yeah. Go for the go hayfield. For the hayfield. Yeah. We'll do another walkthrough when I go up. This is a pretty rough strip. So when you get your tail on the ground, then you hit a bump, you really feel that on your stick. Oh, okay. I don't like that. Is if you push a little forward on the stick to take the weight off the tail. I don't know if you ever tried that. On landing? On, on, la out. on landing, roll out, yep. I don't know, I was always taught to keep the tail on the ground. Yeah, I know, they, they, they say that, but if, if you have control of it, like it's, said, it's okay. Uh, Tony's gonna go up, I'm gonna film him uh, do a couple takeoff and landings. I got, I'm gonna pull my drone out and I'm gonna get some uh, cool shots. And then when he lands, I'm gonna jump in and go for a flight. I'm actually really excited about that. I think we got a good hour of daylight. Yeah, out. yeah, we're, we're looking good. All right, here we go. Actually pull it. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Right through the firewall. So I leave the door open so my elbow, elbow can come out like this. Right through the firewall. Oh, it's got a pulley on it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You ready? Yep. Clear prop. Clear. Okay. So like when you're cruising, you're usually at 53? Well, more like 56. 56? Yeah. That's where you're just happy, you just yeah. keep it at and just... But it won't hurt yeah. it one bit to cruise at 6,000. Oh, okay. They wow. tell me that the two-stroke actually cools best at full throttle. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Because there's the flow of the air is a big part of the cooling. That's true. Maybe that's why when I was in my air bike, I was trying to cool it off and I kept kind of pulling throttle back and it actually was heating it up. Well, it will temporarily. Yeah. If you're, if you're going like full throttle, then you pull your throttle back. Yeah. You'll see your, 
EGTs go up and then back down. Okay. That's normal, not a big thing okay. to worry about. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no battery in this airplane. Okay, yeah. It's just engine voltage. For so sure. that intercom won't come live till you start your engine. Okay. That's interesting. No battery, huh? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's got an alternator. Alternator, yeah. And it runs the lights. It runs the, the various instruments. But no, like, battery as a buffer or anything? You just straight, um, straight just off My alternator? instruction said uh, wire a large capacitor. There's a bus bar there, and the capacitor yeah. just has a bridges on that bus bar. Cool. That's kind of nice. That's what it said in my book. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Anywhere on the strip I shouldn't touch down? Or is it pre pretty much all good? Pretty much all about the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I would be below 60 before I cross that canal bank. Okay. You know? Okay, now i got to pull start this bad okay, boy. Turn on key. Turn on key. It is doing it. Okay, mm -hmm. now I usually pull it out a little bit so I don't skin my knuckles on it. Just, just, just like that. Yeah. Maybe. And then, yep. And then when it starts, turn your idle to about 22. Okay. Uh, All right, clear prop. normal for me. I'm usually in the right seat. Stick in my right hand. Yeah, you really feel the the bumps in this, that's for sure. A little bigger tires would probably help that. Oh yeah, those trees down there, they look a little intimidating. Whew. Here we go. Still on good. Oh, she's got some kick up. Give a little bit of flaps. Wow, well, she's bumpy, man. Oh, wow, she performs. Really nice. Awesome. What a cool airplane. Flaps down, cruising about 52. Trying to keep it coordinated. Every airplane's a little different. Sometimes you uh, you start with rudder pedal and then lead with lead with the stick, or start with stick and then go right into the rudder pedal to keep it coordinated. Cams are looking good. Man, what a cool little little airplane. Handles really nicely. A little bit tough keep, keeping it coordinated. Like I have to get on the rudder a little bit. I don't like the whole RPM thing. Like a four-stroke, you can just kind of pull it back and forth. Uh, well, some airplanes, you don't want to shock cool them. All right, making a right turn. I'm going to do a low pass by him. a lot of rudder, but then it just, and a quick rudder too. All right, we're going to do a, uh, a approach. I probably won't land this one. I just want to see what it feels like. It does feel a little weird being in the left seat. I right, got the airstrip there. Uh, the engine just popped a little bit. Yeah, you can hear it like stutter. Never a good feeling. We're at 70 right now, so a little hot. 
Ah, I hate that. How it stutters like that. I'd like to be slower. We're at 60. A little fast. Let's do a go around. See if I can get this one now. There we go, looking better. We're at 60 right now. I like this, it's looking way better. Yeah, it takes a lot of right rudder. We're at 55, third. Full flaps are on. Full engine back. Oh, she's, she's good. Hit the tail first just a little bit. Put that stick forward to keep some weight off. Get that engine back up. A little squirrely, a little bouncy, but oh man, she's a beauty. That is awesome. So fun. Awesome. What a what a wonderful little airplane. And when I put that throttle in, it was like, here we go. Yeah. A little weird for me sitting in the left seat. Uh, I have a stick for the right, but I took it out. Yeah, oh no, it's not a big deal. The only, I just don't like, and I guess that's with two strokes is, I just like to be able to pull that throttle and, but you're not supposed to, right? Well, this is the information I've gotten. Yeah. Here. It's okay to chop it yep. all the way. Yeah. Um, but what you're not supposed to do is long mid-range descents. Long mid-range descents. Three to f five, don't keep it in that range. Right. It's it's about airspeed. If you're going fast, yep. the forward motion will spin the engine up faster than, it, than it's driving itself. Okay. And so it'll be under lubricated f for the RPM it's turning or something like that. Okay. Uh, and it could cause a... So, so if you, if you want to go slow, get your nose up. Get your nose up. And, you know, yeah, okay. slow gotcha. down. Do you have a name for your Avid? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> you gotta work on the name. Okay. <laughs> Guys, leave a comment below. What should, uh, what should Tony name his Avid? <laughs> Maybe you'll get some ideas. Yeah, that half of them will be obscene, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video. And thank you, Tony, so much for showing Thanks us for coming up, showing us your airplane and uh, letting me fly it. Yeah, that, uh, that's huge. All right, see you guys. Bring the band in. Yeah. Uh, man, I get one, so I gotta go get it. Uh, this life getting all my attention. Don't you worry, I don't burn my bridges. Look at these words, I'm so artistic. Paint this canvas off. Uh, looking fantastic. Even when I know this man. My practice is to, to uh, get them on. Raise the flaps as soon as I'm on the ground. Yep. Keeps the hopping. If you have a garage and you don't have a hanger, you could always get something like this. Kit Foxes do it too. Yeah, Kit Fox and Avid. I don't know if there's, I'm sure there's other ones out there.